Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to those who are here. Welcome to those joining us online. I invite you to join us for coffee and fellowship after worship, and we'll follow that with our book study at 1130. And the only announcement I have this morning is a reminder that the WIN luncheon is coming up on Friday this week. And so you're invited to be here on Friday the 19th from 12 to 1. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing? For those joining us online, that was Colleen thanking the congregation for all of the prayers for Jeff and the successful surgery that has happened. And he's here with us this morning. Praise be to God for that. I invite the choir forward for the call to worship. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is 631.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 17. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely spiritual you are in every way. 
For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, the one who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is God served by human hands as though needing anything, since that very God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, God made all people to inhabit the whole earth and allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps fumble around and find God, though indeed God is not far from each one of us. For in God we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are the offspring of God. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now God commands all people everywhere to repent because God has fixed a day on which to judge the world in righteousness by a man whom God has appointed. And of this, God has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living. And has not allowed our feet to sin. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips. And spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe. And I will tell you what God has done for you. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer. The second reading this morning is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Maintain a good conscience so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. 
For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Christ was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight lives, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. For to whom shall we go? The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, who will give you another advocate, to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because the world neither sees nor knows the spirit. You know the Spirit because the Spirit abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Are there any kids who would like to come forward for a children's sermon this morning? I see a couple maybe in the back. Awesome. Come on up. Here's a couple more. Awesome. Come have a seat, friends. I feel like I missed the plaid memo this morning. Well done. Well done. Have you all heard of creativity? What would you say creativity is? Making something up out of your own? Using your imagination to make things? Oh, it's their school's thing for the month. That's awesome. Yeah, creativity is taking things and making something new out of it, right? Do you all see this? You're right, exactly. It is a bracelet. You've made them. Wow. I also love making friendship bracelets because you can take all sorts of different colors and make them into something new, right? Well, human beings love to be creative, right? And before we were creative, God was creative in making us and then gave us the gift of being creative in lots of different ways, right? Friendship bracelets, art, painting, you name it. There are lots of things that we can be creative in. And that's a God's gift to us, just as God made us and was creative in taking all the parts that make us up and putting them together in new and different ways. We're all human beings, right? But we all 
look a little bit different and have different personalities and different things that we love doing. And all of those things God loves about us. And in that creativity, we're also called to love all those things about other people too. And so when you make a friendship bracelet and either give it to a friend or show it to a friend and they get excited for you, that's them loving you and the gifts that you bring to the world. Or when you all have something exciting to show that you've made in Sunday school or any other things that you love to do and you share that with somebody else, that's God loving you and loving them through you. So all the things that make you, you are things that God invites you to share with the world because they're given to you out of joy from God and in joy to give to other people. Shall we pray? Thank you, God, for your creativity in making each one of us as your beloved children. Thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given us so that we may delight in them and that our community may delight in them with us. Help us to find unique and creative ways of sharing these gifts with the world each and every day. Amen. All right, thanks, Carmel, friends. I was talking with my spiritual director recently, and we were talking about creativity. And through that conversation, I realized that I've been putting creativity into a box. I was thinking about creativity as something that shows up when doing something tangibly artistic, maybe painting or drawing or quilting or knitting, sort of arts and crafts kind of hobbies. But I've never really been interested in or any good at any of those artistic pursuits. And those of you who I know, many of you in this congregation are engaged in that. I applaud you immensely and I'm so grateful for the talents that you share. Truly, I'm in awe of you, honestly. But like I shared up here, I do enjoy making friendship bracelets when the mood strikes. I know I've joined the knitters as they're working away on their beloved creations as I'm sitting there doing a little friendship bracelet. That's a fun thing for me. I love thinking about a specific person as I tie each knot, weaving that love in for them. And I love putting a meal together when there's energy for it. Of course, as you all know, there are some days where you just have to put food on the dinner table before you can go to bed. But when there's energy and excitement for it, it's something I enjoy doing. There's something really grounding about putting a meal together step by step. And in a continual reflection with my spiritual director, I was thinking about the Tizé worships in Lent and how much I loved putting those together and planning those. There is a story to tell with that music there, a story to invite others into while also meeting them where they are at. And through this conversation, I began to see that my life is actually filled with art and creativity. And I had a conversation recently with someone who described art as communication, which I had never heard before. So what are some of the things that art can communicate? A myriad of things, I am sure. But what immediately came to mind was the idea of art communicating something about the artist themselves or a truth about the world. In the making of and in the experience of art, because of the uninhibited creativity of the artist, something new is revealed. In our Acts reading today, Paul talks about God not being confined to the boxes that human beings like to put God into. God doesn't live in shrines or sanctuaries made by human hands, 
nor does God need anything from human beings in order to be God. God is just God. And instead, God has given us life and breath and all good things. God doesn't take the shape of gold, silver, or stone, or any other human imagined box. God isn't found in a political party or candidate or in people of a certain skin color or a geographical region. God is God and therefore is infinitely more expansive than we can ever imagine. But God has come to us in human form, dwelled with us as Jesus Christ so that the infinity of God could be revealed to us who are finite. In the making of and the experience of being human, because of the uninhibited creativity of God, something new is revealed. Because I think that we are God's art in this world, carefully and lovingly woven into the tapestry that is creation. We have been given creative gifts and talents to express who God is in this world. And if we are God's art and made in God's image, we are called to communicate God's love to the world in all that we do. And yes, we mess this up sometimes, but nonetheless, we are called to this. In our baptism, our community celebrates our presence in the body of Christ. And we are invited into the continual effort of the church to work for justice and peace in the world. And in this work, we are not left alone, but God has sent the Holy Spirit to abide with us, to stir up creativity and life, and to continually remake us as beautiful, beloved art. So I invite you to think about these things, both for yourself and as our community here. Where is the Holy Spirit stirring up new creative energy for you right now? Conversely, where has God's creative energy faded away for the time being? And where might the Spirit be inviting you to turn your attention to next? And where in the finite world of wonderful and messy humans do you see the infinite beauty of God at work? Beloveds, you are God's art. You are a story continually being written, a beautiful tapestry of all of your life experiences held and woven together. And you are a song that is music to God's ears. Do not let the lies of this world box you in. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Thy Holy Wings, hymn number, number 613.
I invite you to stand as you are comfortable as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, trusting that what we might not believe today, that our community believes for us, and that that is enough. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. All the earth sings praises to you, O God. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration for all your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Nurturing Lord, you send your spirit to grant us peace. Make your present known to those who feel abandoned or alone, and to all who are sick or grieving, including Tim, Stephanie, Linda, Sharon, Monita, Heidi, Jeff, Barb, and all those we name aloud or in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Comforting God, you hold your people in your loving care. Uphold caregivers, medical professionals, social workers, community aid organizations, and all those who care for people in their time of need. Breathe new life and strength where energy and hope is drained. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Almighty God, you give life and breath to all things, and we give thanks for all your saints. Sustain us by your love until we join them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share signs of peace with one another.
and yes, be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim a cup of blessing. Gather the harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and the dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Praise our table with your presence, Lord, and give us the foretaste of the feast. Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places no, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table, 
Come, taste and see. You may be seated. All are welcome at this table. All are welcome to partake in this meal. Those of you joining us online are welcome to use whatever bread and wine or grape juice you have on hand. Those of you here wishing to remain in your seats, you picked up your cup on the way in, I invite you to take those at this time. Open the side with bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over to the side with wine or grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you here wishing to come forward to receive communion, we'll start on the font side this morning and you come forward, receive your bread, just gluten-free and vegan. And we have both grape juice and wine available. The wine is red, the grape juice is white, and there are baskets on each side for you to place your empty cup in. We'll continue with the Lamb of God.
I invite you to stand as you're comfortable. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us, go out with us, giving us light and life, creativity, courage, and peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 805 in your red hymnal. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.